Is friction advantageous or disadvantageous in the field of games and sports? Friction is usually is called a necessary evil. It means that it is essential in games and sports. Without friction, we cannot give a better performance in the field of sports. For example, athletes use spikes and football players use studs to have appropriate friction while they run fast. Without friction, they are unable to run fast. Even gymnasts use lime on their palms to perform horizontal uh, perform on horizontal bar, uneven bar, and Roman rings to have friction. Even walking may be difficult due to less friction. Weightlifter also use lime on palm before holding the bar in jerk and snatch. In badminton, the players usually seen to uh, are usually seen to rub their soles of shoes with lime before going into the wooden court. In fact, in sports field, there are a lot of example where friction is advantageous. On the other hand, friction is disadvantageous in some of the sports and games, such as cycling. There should be no more friction between road and tires of uh, and tires of uh, cycle. If there is more friction, there will be more wastage of energy of the rider. The tire must be fully inflated to reduce the force of friction in cycling. In roller skating, there should be less friction for better performance. Consequently, it can be said that advantage in some of these sports, but the, in other sports, more friction is of uh, more uh, disadvantage. Up to some extent, some forces of uh, friction is required in various sports. The requirement may differ and vary from sports to sports. Now let's discuss the mechanical analysis of walking and running. Biomechanics is the science of how body works to produce movement. As a matter of fact, every individual is unique, so he walks or runs in a slightly different way. With the help of biomechanical analysis of walking and running, it can become easy for physical education teachers and coaches to collect the technique and to analyze the performance of the athletes. However, walking or running depends on the whole body interaction, but the mechanical analysis of walking and running can be advantageous for us to understand how even minor changes can be helpful in enhancing the performance. To have a clear or cut deep understanding of biomechanical analysis of walking and running, it should uh, it uh, would be better for us to study them separately. That is mechanical analysis of walking and mechanical analysis of running. Mechanical analysis of walking. It has two phases: stance phase and swing phase. Let's discuss the stance phase. A stance phase is a time when the foot is on the ground and uh, it is considered that it is uh, consists of maximum percentage of walking cycle. For a part, the stance phase. Uh, part of a stance phase, both uh, feet, uh, feet have a uh, contact on, on to the ground for a period of time. The stance phase of walking can be further divided into.